design of ALU. So, uh, okay, so let's consider the design of an ALU. ALU subsystem is going to be uh, like this. So, first let's draw the required block diagram. So, initially we have a environment of what is called as an IO port. followed by a four bit register you need many of them so we'll write four bit registers followed by you need a four bit ALU and at the end we have this is also 4 bit it is end end around shifter right and now we look at the control signals that are supposed to be given so this is control of i then a control signal and clock control and clock okay then we have the same control and clock for the ALU as well Right. Yesterday we have seen that if you are using a 4-bit end around shifter, how many controls are required? Can you check it? Can you check yesterday's circuit? Right. Okay. So we draw four controls here. So this is shift control. Now coming to the the data connection, the data path will design, right? So that should be like this. All right, so this is the data path and also we need a carry in coming in for the ALU. So this will be the carry in. Then completing the data path now. 
there will be a two directional bidirectional connection because data can go in both the ways okay then to load from registers to the alu i need two parallel paths okay then you can pass the result of alu to the shifter or also you can actually pass what is called as the carry out so we use a signal out okay so let's note this this is a e this is the sum or carry so the carry out will be through this so this is the general block diagram of the alu subsystem which we are looking for okay now looking at the details of this right we know that alu basically has a 4 bit adder circuit which is required right to be designed from very scratch right so let's assume that that all that already has been done and we can use it directly over here right so a 4 bit adder circuit must be able to accept something what are the two things it has to accept two different uh, variables operands and it should be able to take in a carry and it should be able to give out what is called as a carry out yeah. right okay so let's just write those points here right so if wait adder circuit must be able to take in two two into four bit two eight four bit quantities correct then we actually have a shifter circuit which accepts and shifts the four bit output of the alu result okay a four bit shifter to the output of the alu and so this is what we have basically then all the four bit quantities are presented in parallel form okay that, that's obvious so i don't have to write that now now we specify that the sum in the adder to be stored in the parallel format at the output of the adder from where it will directly go into the shifter and then comes back to the register array through the data path okay so this is the other requirement we'll see the design of a four bit adder later okay the next uh, concept uh, before we go ahead with the alu subsystem okay right so that means uh, fine the sum must be specified in parallel form okay at the output of alu at the output of alu you have to have this in the parallel form because yesterday we have seen that there is a shifter which takes the input in parallel form, right this is just because of that right now whatever operations are performed by the alu those operations require a single four bit data bus 
between adder and the shifter okay so due to the parallel result we require a four bit data bus between adder and the shift so to carry the parallel data you require a parallel bus or a single four bit bus and you also require another four bit bus okay that is for a connection between the shifter to the register array all right so another four bit bus is required to transfer the data from the shifter to the registers so these are the requirements okay now the input to the adder is always in the form of two four bit numbers correct because a is a four bit number b is another four bit number because both of them being four bit numbers plus four bit numbers now you should have two four bit buses correct to carry the data into the adder right okay so we are actually calculating the requirement now so we understood that so far we have calculated two buses are required now we are adding two more buses because we need to transfer the data from the registers to the ale okay so since the input to the alu right input consists of two four bit numbers we need two more four bit buses to connect registers to a okay so just look at the diagram to make things clear so now we understood that this is four bit this is also four bit okay proceeding further this means so overall our requirements are we need a four bit alu four bit shift register right followed by four bit buses into four in number okay all, all right now shifter is actually uh, going to work without any clocking system because as soon as you give a control signal it will shift the data that is present at the input of that particular device by so many amounts okay so many shifts is going to provide there is no requirement of the clock okay so that's also a, a point to note so we'll write that the other device devices require clock you can see that in the diagram we have shown four bit registers require clock ALU also requires clock right but you see shift register does not need a clock okay the shift register is unclocked device and it operates on the data at 
its input lines as as soon as it receives control signals for shifting as soon as it is received it will directly perform what is called as the shifting operation right to produce output at the output lines okay so these are the requirements of a 4 bit data path for the processor that's what we have we are trying to design all right now in this we understood that we need a 4 bit adder first right so let's look at the 4 bit adders design now okay so in order to look at the 4 bit addition so this is how the addition is going to be performed let's look at uh, the binary truth table of what is called as a adder okay so let's say we have the inputs a i b i so there is a carry in so i write c i minus one carry from the previous stage so i need s i and the outgoing carry c i okay so since there are three possible inputs how many combinations you have from the basics of logic design we know that if you have three inputs there are two to the power three of possible cases so two to the three is eight right we need to write eight different combinations of inputs over here so zero 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 first case zero zero one then zero one zero one 100101101 and the last combination is 111 okay now the sum and carry are calculated as this right whenever you add the two numbers if the digits are going to be extended to the second bit position then that will be considered as a carry for example you see now 0 plus 0 i am performing the addition of this first line okay so 0 plus 0 is 0 again to that 0 i am adding the third 0 here that's also 0 right so as a result i don't have any sum coming up and i don't have any carry coming up so the result you can write 0 is a sum 0 is a carry okay next Let's go to the next number 0 plus 0 is 0 0 plus 1 is 1 so sum is 1 no carry so same thing holds good here 0 plus 1 is 1 1 plus 0 is 1 so 1 and this is 0 next now you see 0 plus 1 is 1 1 plus 1 is 1 0 1 0 means sum is 0 carry is 1 okay next 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1 no carry then 1 plus 0 plus 1 is sum becoming 0, carry becoming 1. Then 1 plus 1 plus 0 is nothing but this is 0, this is 1. Okay. Then 1 plus 1 is 1, 0, 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1. Right? Okay. So this is the standard truth table of a adder. It's a single bit adder. Now this has to be repeated four times because we have four bit adders, right? Okay. Now, so let us say we are going to perform the addition 
right of uh, say two four bit numbers right how the numbers are getting added let's let's look at an example okay so before going to the actual circuit or actual equations of the circuit let's consider two uh, say eight bit two numbers okay let's say i'll write a now so a is say one zero zero one one zero one one this is a okay and i want to perform the addition with b okay so this is zero one 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 zero one zero okay so let's do the addition same same thing what we did earlier that is one zero 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 one zero one zero one this is how you do the calculation correct out of which you can see that many times you have the carry coming in correct so when i th i think from you see that there will be a carry from i think one plus one so there is a carry coming in right this is a carry correct so i also have a carry there is also one and one plus one so you have a carry coming in this is also generating a new carry right you can see that there is a carry coming from previous stage to the current current stage so when i add these two numbers one plus one there is a previous carry also coming in that is also c equal to one so one plus one plus one will come into picture right i just wanted to demonstrate that that's all. okay right now uh ai and bi represent the present inputs okay so let's just uh, understand what we are trying to do here if you are actually considering a ith column for addition right for adding uh, the bits of nth column right or any nth column right we need to okay i i think i used i over there so i'll just change this to i okay because i use i already so this is ith column for any ith column right a i comma b i represent input bits so c i minus one represents what now the carry from previous column right so this indicates si is the sum of the present addition and what is ci represents the carry out that is outgoing carry from the current column right and so now how do you represent uh, the sum of this addition si how do you write a si right si can be considered as the okay. result of addition using a half adder right yeah. and uh, i can write a half adder right first let's do the representation for half adder so yes. let the half adder sum of ith column any column okay is denoted as hi hi is nothing but if you remember it is ai bi bar plus ai bar bi it is a xor operation right so this is ai xor bi let me call this as equation number one 
okay using this i can write the sum of the full adder therefore the si is equal to the hi into ci minus 1 bar the input carry plus this is hi bar ci minus 1 okay so this is equation number two already we have studied these things in the logic design okay right then we also write therefore the ci the carry out is equal to this is a i b i plus this is h i c i minus one right using this we can directly implement the required function right we understand that okay this these are the equations required right so now you see that uh, normally these and gates not gates and xor xnor etc are very standard uh, packages in any manufacturing process of the vlsi chips so you see that these functions will be built in right you just have to do a uh, drag and drop in your design so that right your uh, manufacturing process or the design process right becomes very quick all right now let us look at what are the different elements that are required right so from the above written uh, what you call the truth table of full adder right i'm writing the following right you see that the if ai is equal to bi okay just check out what is si can i write si is equal to uh, ci minus 1 wherever i have ai and bi same the sum is equal to the previous cat okay you can just verify that right then if ai is not equal to bi right then also i can observe something this is the si is equal to ci minus one's complement okay all right now i can try to write the conditions for ci right as follows this means so this implies now you see the ci becomes equal to ai also equal to bi right whenever ai and bi are same so if ai equals to bi if this is not the case then ci becomes equal to ci minus 1 if the ai is not equal to bi everything is directly written from the previously written table okay right now i i observe something more let me call this is 4 these two as 5 and let me understand something more also from the table if ai and bi are same and it is equal to 1 this implies ci also equal to 1 this is what is the meaning of my previous statement that is equation number 5 yeah. or so i understand the same thing that is ai equal to bi equal to 0 this means ci is also 0 equation number 6 right now this implementation has to be performed using our standard uh, what you call adder circuit okay so what i write i directly write the standard adder element right this means it is for it is for one bit addition for a one bit addition 
this is how I need to write. Okay, so okay, so that means the first component I'm going to write is a block, and to this block we have inputs provided in the following fashion. One input, input number two, input number three, and two outputs. Sum and a cat. Okay. This is an adder element AI BI. So this is CI minus one SI. And see, this needs to be connected in such a way that you will you get a four bit adder, right? So let's write the final block diagram of a four bit adder. Okay, this is a single element, so. So the 4-bit adder circuit will look like this. Okay. Now I have to repeat the same block four times now. Okay. This is the first one. Second. third so we know that our uh, block we have four blocks and the lsb is represented from the rightmost side okay so what we do for each of the block we have two inputs coming as uh, they are provided as inputs okay this is for a and let me say this is for B. Okay. But for the first block, I have another input that is coming, which is my input carry to the first block. Okay. Now, what are the outputs you have? You have two outputs from each of the block. One output is this is a carry. One is carry and one is sum. Okay. But the carry which goes out right, you always make sure that it goes to the next next input. So this has to be connected now to the next this thing as input. Okay, so this is the carry in that is to the next level. So what, what, what how we can write is this is say C naught. Right. So this is the carry coming from the previous. I can write C in. Alright. So I have zeroth bit of A and zeroth bit of B are coming as input. Right. It produces a C naught, uh, not C naught, sorry, that's a sum by mistake. I'll write properly so this is uh, s naught and this is a c naught okay so c naught is the output so this is the single unit corresponding to a full adder so i'll write this is f a full adder zero now you you see that after this 
the zeroth bits of both numbers get added generating a sum and carry but this carry will go to the next stage c i minus 1 so when you write a f a 1 right for the first adder see the input of carry will be zeroth one because it is i minus 1 i is equal to 1 i minus 1 will be like this okay now add the other two numbers as well so this is the first number incoming this is the second number incoming so this is a1 this is b1 again this addition results in two different numbers so first one we will call this as the s1 okay and in addition to s1 i also get what is called as the carry okay so this carry now is carried out to the next level and the connections are made like this okay this is how it's going in as input to the next so what is the name of this this will be c1 so c1 goes here so sum is available at the output you need to connect this carry to the next level so next level will be full adder that is a adder circuit number two okay so this also you are going to use say two inputs this is a2 then this is going to generate the following outputs this is s2 and another carry that carry will go to the next level and we make the connections like this okay so now this is given as input carry to this level and let's write the name first so this is s2 and c2 that c2 itself is going to be the input carry for the next level right and here i provide more inputs the third bits of both numbers are considered here the third the fourth bits are a3 and b3 okay so this is full adder number 3 so what are the notations for the outputs over here one will be s3 and another will be it's actually s uh, c3 but there is no c3 now because it's a four bit so the last one will be c out okay output carry c out so now overall the structure looks like this okay four bit structure uh, a and b are four bit numbers See the sum is also 4 bit in number S0, S1, S2, S3 all together is what is considered as the 4 bit answer. Are you okay? Fine. So this is implementation of ALU functions now what are the basic operations that a, a arithmetic and logic unit should be able to perform basically addition subtraction right then coming to the logical operations you are supposed to perform the AND and the OR as well as the XOR operation. These are the 
fundamental operations that you need to perform when you say you are building a ALU. Okay. Fundamental operations to be performed are the first one is addition. Addition, then you need subtraction. We don't say multiplication and division because repeated addition is multiplication and repeated subtraction gives you the division right so you can implement those two functions using addition and subtraction itself okay then you need the logical operations the and then you need or right then you need x or fundamentally you expect this because by using these you can implement any other logical functions okay now we know that the a and b which are passed as inputs to the alu right the alu block they are the binary numbers right so when you say you are trying to represent a binary number it is obvious that you will be allowed to represent the complement as well in the sense one can be turned to zero and zeros can be turned into one right so, if at all the binary numbers are available in both both normal form as well as a complemented form, complement could be one's complement or two's complement, right? Then we know that the subtraction is nothing but simple addition with the two's complement number, right? So first, let's look at anyway. Addition is done because the whole block is going to be an adder. Adder circuit itself we have designed. Now we have to see how this adder circuit is going to perform the subtraction right so let's this is the first thing we are going to discuss how to perform a subtraction right if the binary inputs to the adder binary input to the adder is available in two's complement form right what is the advantage of uh, having a number in two's complement form you can simply perform the subtraction right this implies the subtraction can be performed by the adder itself this is because if you remember the basics of uh, the binary subtraction what we are going to do is take take the first number as it is second number you take its two's complement right and then you simply add the result will be the actually the result is going to be the result of the subtraction of two numbers this is what we already have studied right so that's why we are expecting that the input at the input of the adder circuit there should be a facility to take its two's complement that's all right what do you mean by two's complement two's complement in the sense first you take one's complement change every ones into zeros and zeros into ones then add one to that that is nothing but a two's complement correct right so what we do now here right so to obtain the two's complement of say one of the number of b right what you are supposed to do first right to obtain two's complement of b first the b should pass through not gates 
okay I'll, I'll write the not in capital just to indicate that this is an operation not a simple word okay so this is it should pass through not gates right to get one's complement and then should be added by one to get two's complement. So once you have the two's complement with you, right, by adding the two's complement of B with A, we get A minus B as an answer. All right, so we understand that's how you have to do this. So, out of our requirement, addition and subtraction are over. Now, if you do addition and subtraction repeatedly, definitely you will be able to perform the multiplication and division. So, we don't have to worry about it. Now, we have to look at uh, how to implement AND OR and XOR operations. Okay. Now, let's say that we have obtained the results from the adder. We can perform addition and subtraction. Right. So, the facility of complementing is required to perform the subtraction, right? Because definitely we need to uh, take a complement, then add one to that. Okay, now, so let us first understand, in order, before we go to the concept of what you call uh, AND, OR, and XOR, let's look at the equations once again, okay? So, what is SI? If you remember, SI is equal to CI minus 1 into HI complement plus CI minus 1 complement into HI. Correct? This is one equation. Uh, gives you the sum. Okay. Then we have the carry. Carry is equal to AI BI plus C i minus 1 into h i. Correct? So, this is the carry out or a new carry. Right? And I also know that h i represents the half sum. So, how do you calculate half sum? This is a i bar b i plus a i b i bar. So, this is I can write half adder sum or half sum. Okay. Now, let us, let's, let's do the modifications in these equations to get our other operations. Okay. So, that is, in the above equation, let the ci minus 1 become equal to 0, means my input carry is 0. carry in is equal to 0. Now, let us look at the effect of this on the sum. This means, as I know that, the SI becomes equal to HI into CI minus 1 complement. CI minus 1 is 0, so this is 1 plus this is HI component uh, complement into the ci minus 1 which is 0 correct so you can see that this is simply hi right but i know that what is hi so what is hi hi is equal to this is ai bi bar plus ai bar bi right so what is this this is xor operation correct this is ai xor bi so how to calculate the xor how to perform xor operation now 
simply make the ci minus 1 0 and give your a and b inputs okay right so this implies let's write the statement now this implies if ci minus 1 is equal to 0 that implies d si is equal to ai xor bi this implies the exclusive or operation gets performed performed for inputs a and b you give normally give the inputs a and b whatever values you want you can give here right and simply make input carry is equal to zero that's all okay fine let's go ahead then now in the same equation uh, sorry in the same uh, block diagram right we will try to perform ci minus 1 is equal to 1 now you see what happens with si si is equal to the h i into ci minus 1 bar so that is 0 plus h i bar into ci minus 1 so this is nothing but h i bar right what is h i bar h i bar is nothing but it is originally written as a i b i bar plus a i bar b i correct whole bar because what, what is this this inside the bracket is h i now its complement can be directly written as follows this is a i bar b i bar plus a i b i from the basics of uh, logic digital logic we know that this is x nor operation so this is a i b i bar right so this implies exclusive nor operation so in that that means what is the conclusion now so this implies in order to perform the exclusive nor operation between the input A and B using the adder circuit right make ci minus 1 equal to 1 that's all okay now let let's try to write the uh, what you call okay let's look at the carry itself under some under the assumed condition let's look at the equation for carry ci okay so we know that let me write the ci equation so what is ci ci is equal to ai bi plus hi into ci minus 1 correct so if we make ci minus 1 equal to 1 in the above case what happens just verify so ci is equal to ai bi plus hi now we already know the equation for hi let's substitute so this is ai bi plus what is hi ai bar bi plus a i b i bar correct now what i'm trying to do here is i'll try to club something so that i can get uh, a different version of this right so you see that there is a i common between these two terms so let's take that out so this is a i into b i plus b i bar plus this is a i bar b i 
this is equal to what is this if bi plus bi bar is what it's one so this is simply ai i r b i right so there is there is a this is actually an identity right uh, one of the so if you have this is ai plus bi okay x plus x bar y is nothing but x plus y so that's the that's the identity i'm using here so if you have x plus x bar y this is simply x plus y so x is ai y is bi that's why your answer is ai plus bi now this means what which operation is being carried out it's or it is or right it's or right a plus b is or a into b is and right so this implies if ci minus 1 is equal to 1 this implies the ci is equal to ai plus bi right this itself is or operation so or operation can be performed under this condition right you just have to make ci minus 1 ci minus 1 equal to 1 and ci minus 1 equal to 1 and you have to collect the answer at the ci not sum okay if what you collect at sum is x nor operation so the previous discussion you can see that you are collecting si over there si is a sum right sum will give you x nor operation carry will give you the or operation okay now so one more left now i just have to look how to get the and output right so in order to get the and output let's uh, look at this so if ci minus 1 equal to 0 right if ci minus 1 equal to 0 calculate hi this uh, sorry calculate the ci then ci is equal to Equation says ai bi plus this is hi into 0. So, what is this? This is simply ai bi. This is what? This itself is and. Right? So, now these are the required conditions, right? Using which you can perform and or xor xnor addition and subtraction using a single circuit same circuit can perform all these operations that's why alu is nothing but a simple adder circuits with supporting not gates at the input okay yeah. right so previously we wrote an adder circuit now so final answer of oh, is that this is what we are we have designed now so the final answer you have to write if a question comes saying that show that the adder circuit can perform all the required operations of an ALU, right? So, this is the final circuit you have to show, okay? Final block diagram of the ALU. That is like this. Second block. Okay, now the input a comes normally input will be provided a will come into this block directly okay so i can write a as it is so four arrow marks 
for providing input A. Right. So let me write those first. This is for A. For each of the block, you will write one such arrow mark. Okay. Right. This is for A. And this is for the input A coming to the first block. Yeah. Then you see that for passing the B into these blocks, I need a different gate. Right? So that is a which gate? Which gate you are going to use? You have to use a not gate. Right, I will have to draw it reverse. So, okay, this is a not gate. Okay, now the input to comes either from the NOT gate or comes without NOT gate, right? That actually depends upon which input you want to pass, correct? So, what we do? We use a switch over there, okay? So, the switch is indicated in this fashion. So, let me draw an arrow mark. There will be a switch connected, but okay, then one more here. And another one here. Right. Now, if at all you want to pass the B as it is, right, without passing through the NOT gate, I have two options. Okay. Whether you can actually pass B to this. You can pass the B. You can pass the B to this. Okay, this is the first case. B will go to the NOT gate and comes out as B bar. Okay, and at the same time, if I don't pass through the NOT gate, then how it comes out? It comes as it is. It is B itself. Okay, so I'll show things like this. So I have two options now. So that option is indicated by, I am going to use a switch now. So this switch can be switched between any num anything, right? You can actually connect this to this side. See, this can be connected to this or this, right? If you connect to this side, it is B. If you connect to the output of this, then this becomes B bar, okay? Right, so the same setup, I'm going to repeat now for the other inputs as well. So there is a direct option of giving the B, right? Then I have the option of converting this into B bar. And I provide that here. So that means at this point, I always have the possibility of connecting this to any point I want, right? So maybe,
this is the error model okay so i can switch this between this point or that point if you want a note switch this to the right side if you don't want a complement keep it as it is okay right Okay, and the fourth one is like this. Okay, now let's give the name to these signals. So this is the highest value. So this is A3, B3. But if you connect to this, this you get B3 complement. Okay, similarly, this is A2, B2. B2 will come as it is on the left side, but here it should be B2 complement. Same. This is a1 b1 and here you get b1 complement then this is a0 b0 here you are going to get at this point okay so we understood like this then you have to have a facility to provide the input carry right so let's do that now so let me say that I'm going to give the, oh sorry, reverse direction. It has to be like this. So this is the C in, right. You have the facility to make C in zero or one. C in zero means you get something at the output, right. C in is one means you will get some other, right, output. Okay, now this adder block provides many things at the output. So let us try to write them now. The first one is the carry, right? So the carry has to pass to the next stage, right? So okay. let's write this way. Right. Now, you have you can take the sum or carry from the output because see if you want to perform AND operation, right, you may require carry as your answer, correct? See AND and OR operations are obtained from where? Obtained from CI, correct? At the same time, the XOR, XNOR operations are obtained from where? They are obtained from the sum itself, correct? you might require SI or CI at your output. That's what is the indication. So, okay, this is how you collect. I'll, I'll show the collection later. First, let's, let's draw this. Hmm? Okay, so there is a sum coming out. Right, so this is S naught let me write this is C naught. 
C of three naught goes here. Then you have S one coming out. So this is S one. Then we have S two. This is C2 and in the final stage we have the following possible outputs. Okay, so that's this. S3. And you can have C3. So this is the same adder circuit. Adder number 3. This is number 2. 1. And this is adder 0. Okay, now the we know that output can be collected either from S or C. Okay, so for that reason, we will have another arrow mark going out. This is, but if, if at all you want to collect a C, right, you can make a connection from here. Otherwise, you can collect it from the S itself. Okay, so I will just show you with another switch over here. All right, so this is the ultimate diagram we are expecting as an answer, right? Okay. C2 and say this is this. All right. Now, so how do you get your answers? In order to get the answer, I need another switch over here. Okay, so let, let this be the point of collection. Like this. Now the output can be collected from them in this fashion. Okay. Okay. Now you see that you can actually switch between either of these points. Like this. If you want to collect something from the carry, you have to make this connection. Okay. At the same time, if you want to collect something from the sum, right, then your connection will be towards the right side. Are you okay? Yes.
okay so right now i am showing that i am taking the connection from carry itself okay right so now you see your answer has to be like this is answer bit number 0 this is bit number 1 because it can be anything it can be uh, and operation it can be or operation depending upon how you are making changes in the circuit correct that's why you cannot write what answer you are getting you simply have to write bit 1 bit 2 etc okay this is second the bit number 2 of the answer and this is the bit number 3 of the answer so we'll make a small change here so this will be the c out Right. So this is the final circuit which you have to write when the question comes that uh, explain how all the ALU operations can be performed by modifying the adder circuit. Right. So start with the initial part. Show that every operation can be performed, and then you uh, write this whole circuit diagram saying that. This is the final ALU structure which you have designed. The next concept is called as Manchester carry chain. So let me write the Manchester carry chain. It's an adder element. Okay. Uh, so now you can see that the carry in the pre all the previous uh, discussion, the carry is passing through the complete uh, circuit. Right. Carry will from one stage to go to second stage, second to the third, third to fourth, and so on. Right. So you see that uh, it is actually passing through the transmission gate. Right. So instead of that, the carry can be passed through a pre-charged clock signal. Right. And in the sense, you, you try to keep a single N MOS using which you can pass the carry. So that kind of arrangement is what is called as Manchester carry chain adder element. All right. So let's let's uh, write the point first. instead of the carry passing through a complete transmission gate the carry path can be pre-charged by using a clock signal right and it can be gated by a single NMOS, right? So if the carry path which is pre-charged to say supply voltage VDD, then the transmission gate can be reduced to a simple NMOS. Right. So if you remember the basics, the transmit transmission gate uses how many uh, how many MOS devices? You have two MOS devices. Okay. But now what we you are going to do? You are going to replace the two MOSs required for a transmission gate by a single N MOS. Right. So that's why this is. Uh, that kind of circuit is what is considered as the Man Manchester carry chain. Alright, so let me write that statement now. 
So if the but he charged to the supply voltage that is VDD. He charges to VDD, then the advantage is that uh, vision gates can be reduced at a key place. On N. Okay. And this circuit is Okay. So, there are multiple versions in which you can write this circuit. Let's write the simplest one for our reference. Okay. So that is. Let me draw a MOSFET first, then we will extend this MOSFET to write the other MOSFET. Okay. Need uh, four of such. Now, so
now this is a basically basic circuit which we require so there is a power supply given to this point and uh, we call it as vd power supply okay and this will be a pmos on the top we give the function over here whichever function you want to pass that function can be applied to this point okay same point same thing needs to be applied on the other side because this is the PMOS circuit it goes to the pmos and comes to the nmos right but now on this side you apply the carry right this will be the ci bar you have the pi coming from this side okay this is a nmos and the same thing is applicable to this point there is a small mistake this is how it's getting connected okay so you connect this take it Point. Okay, not this side. So here you are going to apply the gated input. That's why it is PI, and the output that is called as C. So C in is applied from this side, and C out is applicable on the other side. So you use a instead of a use instead of using a transmission gate, right? You are simply using a N MOS. Okay, so the circuit has less complicated complications, right? And you are able to do the work of the same address circuit using a simple component like this, right? So transmission gate is getting replaced by what? A NMOS, right? That's why it is called as a uh, Manchester carry chain circuit. Right, so now I'll write one more point over here just to make this clear. Okay, anyway, this is wrong, right? So, very similar to this, I can do with the PMOS as well. Similarly, the PMOS transistors. The PMOS transistors of carry generation circuit can be removed. Right? So, since less number of transistors you have in your circuit, the advantage of Manchester is that it is very fast but large set of such cascaded cells if you use in a circuit that will slow down the process because there is what is called as a rc effect right and rc means there is a time delay associated with rc right so it will uh, generate a propagation delay associated with the circuit okay so The Manchester cell is very fast. Then the next characteristic is that if large set of the Manchester cells are used in a circuit then the 
the operation due to it will slow down due to that distributed RC effect okay so because of this the propagation time grows it is it's going to increase that's the only problem which you have whenever you use multiple uh, Manchester chain circuits in, uh, in your circuit. You can use few of them for sure. That will definitely uh, be helpful because that's very fast. All right. Okay. Then 